Imagine a child only six months in the womb of her mother. At this point, she has fully developed hands and feet. Her heart pumps as anyone else's heart would pump. She has eyes fully developed. She has ears fully developed, including all that is necessary in each of these instruments for her to be able to live outside the womb if necessary. But in spite of all of these tools at her disposal, she can really use none of them. Her ears have only been able to pick up muffled sounds filtered through the mother's womb. Her eyes have only seen two shades of really just red and black. She has a fully developed sense of taste, but she's never tasted anything perhaps except her thumb. She has feet to run, but she has no ability to run. She swims in her mother's womb. She reaches out with her hands and she can touch the very limits of the universe that she knows. And for all she knows, this is all that exists. Jesus said that if we are to enter into the kingdom of heaven, we must be born again. Nicodemus thought this was a bit of a joke, and he said, am I supposed to be born once again when I'm old from my mother's womb? Interestingly, Jesus replied to Nicodemus' question not with a no, but merely to reiterate what he had said before. You must be born of water and of spirit. This invites us, I think, to think of the analogy of the child inside of the womb and to understand what he meant by being born again. Again, this child has all of the features of the human being, and yet inside of the womb, they are almost entirely wasted so far. And again, all she knows is this universe, and this is the only one that could possibly exist. However, within three months, her mother is going to begin to give birth to her, and she's going to come through the birth canal, and then when she comes into the light, it's going to be a tormenting, excruciating experience for her. For the first time, she's going to see light. She's going to come through the womb, and it's going to strike her eyes, the eyes she barely knew she had, as swords being slammed into one's eyeballs. She's going to scream and cry, trying to keep this light out of her eyes. She's going to hear for the first time sounds that are no longer muffled by her mother's womb and no longer muffled by the water surrounding her. She is going to hear the sound of the doctor's voice, the sound of her mother's cries. They're all going to come piercing into her ears and it's going to be even more painful than the light is to her eyes. She's going to drop for the first time in her life from 98.6 degrees, a steady temperature she's always been familiar with, give or take one or two or maybe three degrees at most, to suddenly dropping to about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. She's going to be shivering cold, blinded by the light, and have a piercing headache caused by the sound of people's voices. It's all going to be new and she's going to suddenly emerge into a universe she never could have imagined existed. Suddenly, suddenly, all of those features at first are going to be her enemies, but in time she will adapt to this new world. And once she has tasted strawberries, and once she has run over green grass, once she has seen the color of a rainbow, once she has heard a symphony, or just the sound of her mother's voice, she would never choose that previous existence again. It would be as insane, I think, for us to suppose that this world we're living in right now is all that exists. As insane to believe that as it would be for the child six months in the womb to believe that this is all that exists. 
we are to be born again. And one day we will step into the full light. But for now, this world is just a second womb through which we need to be born. So what about you? Is this all that exists? Is this all you believe in? Or are you sometimes tempted to believe that there's something beyond? As the child reaches out and touches the limits of her universe and believes this is all there is, it would be easy for you to assume that though you can't touch the stars, you can't go to the edge of the universe. You at least know theoretically that it's there. And maybe, maybe, it's easy to assume again that the material world is all there is. But what if you're just in a second womb and you're being invited into the kingdom of God? Several years ago, my paternal grandmother passed away. And I remember thinking that morning, January 2nd, that the entire world should go into mourning and feel the way I felt. I remember opening up the newspapers that morning and seeing headlines regarding sports teams' victories. I remember seeing headlines about the economic markets. I remember seeing headlines about other tragedies in the world, and in some cases, the death of one or two stars. I saw nothing in the newspaper about my grandma. Now, I shouldn't have expected that the newspaper, such as the New York Times, would carry a story about the death of my grandmother, a woman who died in a town of 300 people and lived basically anonymous for 90 years. However, doesn't change the fact that I felt that something was wrong with the world for not stopping altogether because of this tragedy. I felt like the entire world should be in mourning right now, and yet nobody else hardly knew about her passing. She had lived and died in almost complete anonymity, and this struck me as incredibly odd especially seeing how great and noble of a woman she was. I remember actually, and I know this will sound maybe idiosyncratic or eccentric, but I remember going down to the river and throwing some rocks in the river. And I remember thinking that here's a river and here's nature going on as if nothing at all had ever happened. Again, this astonishing and profound sense of the strangeness of a world that seems to be utterly and totally indifferent to the things that I feel. I think in some way that that's my, that might be what King David might have felt when he stood underneath the moon and the stars and felt completely overwhelmed. How could the same God who governs after having made these great heavenly bodies, how could he think that there's anything special about me? Especially, why would God bother to visit such small creatures as myself when in fact he has such grand heavenly sights to visit at his leisure? And yet, David said, yet you are mindful of him, and yet you do visit him, and yet you have crowned him with glory and honor and given him dominion. So, here's this world that you live in, and oftentimes you're going to feel at great variance with the way the world is working. Inside, there will be storms and bleak desperation at times, sometimes bordering on despair. 
and the world will go on as if it doesn't even know you exist. And you might be mistaken when you look at creation if you're judging from the way creation takes in the way you feel. You might be mistaken in thinking that that's the way God feels. But in fact, you are very central to everything that God thinks. For no one else in this universe, for nothing else in this universe, did he bleed and die. He has attended the funeral of every single sparrow that has ever fallen from the sky. He has numbered the hairs upon your head. In all, all, all of the details that he has made, he has not forgotten you. And in the midst of all of the glory and the wonder that he's made, somehow he's extraordinarily mindful of you. Never forget that. Wow.